the heart of the United I like the way everybody's trying to spread themselves out. It's very fantastic. Responding to our, uh, our advice. And, and, and that's really where I want to begin, by thanking everybody, by thanking you uh, in the media and also thanking everyone for the, the huge efforts that the country is, is making to uh, co comply with the advice that we've been given. And we're, we're asking such a huge amount, uh, asking students to put their education on hold. We're asking people not to socialise in the normal way. And already we can see the impact that this is having on the, on the UK economy and on, on business, on great, great companies. And so it's vital that we in government stand behind them uh, when what we are asking everyone to do is so crucial for saving literally thousands of, of lives uh, by defeating this virus. And I'm conscious as, as the days have gone by that people will want to know how long we are expecting them to keep it up. And I wanted to try to say something today about how I see the time scale of this campaign and, and where we're going and, and what we, we need to do. And I do think, looking at it all, that we can turn the tide within the next 12 weeks. And I'm absolutely confident that we can send a coronavirus packing in this country, but only if we take the steps, we all take the steps that we have outlined. And that is vital because that is how we're going to reduce the peak. And once we've achieved that, and I think that uh, we will, uh, if we do let's take the steps that I've said, then the scientific progress that we're making will really start to come into play. And I, I, I wanted to discuss a little bit of that uh, this afternoon with you, because we are rapidly becoming so much better at understanding the, the genomics at the heart of uh, this virus, uh, and all that is going on in this country. We're getting better at understanding the medicines that may treat and cure it. And today, we've put the first British corona patient into a randomized trial for drugs that may treat the disease. UK experts scientists expect to start trials for the first vaccine within a month. And above all, we're getting better at testing. Uh, this crisis is so difficult because the enemy is invisible. And the answer is to remove the cloak of invisibility and to identify the virus and to be able to, to know who, which of us is carrying it or who has actually had it and now got over it. And to give you an idea of what is coming down the track, uh, we're in negotiations today to buy an, a, a so-called antibody test, as simple as a, a pregnancy test, that can tell whether you have had the disease. And it's early days, but if it works as its proponents claim, then we will buy literally hundreds of thousands of these kits as soon as practicable, because obviously it has the potential to be a total game changer. Because once you know that you have had it, uh, you know that you're likely to be less vulnerable, uh, you're less likely to pass it on, and you can go back to work. And of course, by the same token, we're massively increasing the testing to see whether you have it now, and ramping up daily testing from 5,000 a day to 10,000 to 25,000, and then up to 250,000. And that knowledge of where the, the, the virus is will make a huge difference to our management of the disease and our ability to reduce uh, disruption and economic difficulties. And I wanted to, to set that out because it's all, it's, this is rapidly coming down the track, as I say, but it will take time to come on stream. And that is why, in the meantime, to get back to a theme that you know I'm going to repeat, it is absolutely vital that we follow the advice that uh, we've uh, been hearing over the last few days, the, the announcements that we've already made about staying at home, if you have the symptoms, if your family uh, has the symptoms, about avoiding unnecessary contact, avoiding gatherings where you may pick up the disease, pubs, bars, restaurants. Please, please follow all that advice scrupulously. Work from home. 
if you possibly can. Wash your hands. Wash your hands. And it's by this combination of ruthless, determined, collective action and scientific progress that we're already seeing that we will, we will succeed. And I know how difficult it may be, uh, or it may seem right now, but if we do this together, we will save, as I say, many, many thousands of lives. And to everybody in the UK business world, everybody uh, who is worried about their, their jobs, uh, I, I, everybody in, uh, who faces difficulties because of the advice that we are giving, uh, I say to uh, business, stand by your employees, stand by your workers, because we will stand by you. And you'll be hearing more about that in the course of the next day or so. And that is how, by a mixture of collective, determined collective action and scientific progress, I have absolutely no doubt that we will turn the tide of this disease and beat it together. Now, I'm going to ask, I don't know whether, whether I or our two distinguished experts need to add anything to that. I don't think they, they, they do. Why don't, we, why, don't we, why, don't we, I, I, why don't we just go straight to, to questions? I don't propose to spend a, a very long time at this particular one since we've had, we've, we've, we've had about four or five of these already in the last few days. You know, I, I, don't want, I don't want to weary you uh, with these occasions. Do you feel that useful? Yeah. Yes. Good. Okay. Well, that's quite possible. Um, uh, let's 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 go to let's go round to to Nora first. Nora Kuhn, BBC. Um, thank you very much, Prime Minister. Um, you told the country yesterday you wouldn't hesitate to take extra measures. People are worried about what that might mean. Yes. Can you tell people what might be next? Will you, within days, seek to shut pubs, cafes, clubs? And a lot of people have contacted us today to say the measures set out for businesses to apply to loans is simply not quick enough for them to be able to keep their staff on. We've had a lot of messages from people who are running businesses yeah. who are deeply worried. Is it good enough to say to business, you can apply for a loan when many of them face immediate decisions that might mean they have to uh, cut staff? Yeah. Um, well, well first, first of all, on decisions about pubs, uh, bars, uh, restaurants and, and so on. As, as I said, we're guided very much by uh, by the science and, and, and whether we think that the advice that we've given is is working. So uh, as long as we think that people are actually staying away from places where they may transmit or, or pick up the disease in the way that uh, we've recommended, that, that, that we've recommended they should avoid those places, if we feel that that is working, uh, then we just want to say thank you to everybody for their extraordinary efforts and encourage everybody to do likewise. If we feel that, that it isn't working, uh, as I said yesterday, we need to bring forward uh, tougher measures, then of course nothing is, is ruled out. But I, I want to thank everybody for what they're doing. I know it's tough, I know it's difficult, but we've just got to do it together. And please, please, please follow the advice. Um, second thing, uh, you mentioned businesses, are, we've got a lot of and then we'll, of course, get grants up front. I'm all too aware of the differences and worries that they face. There'll be more on this uh, tomorrow from, uh, from Rishi, the, the Chancellor, Rishi Sunak, the Chancellor. And my message to, to business is uh, the, the one I gave just now. Stand by your employees, as, because we're going to stand by you. I'm going to stand by the workers of this country. And there's a, there's a broad point I want to make. This time it's going to be different. As we come through this difficult economic phase, you remember what happened in 2008, everybody said we bailed out the banks and we didn't look after the people who, who really suffer. This time we're going to make sure that we look after the people who really uh, suffer from the economic consequences of what we're asking them to do. And we'll be directing our support to them first, looking after the people first. Uh, Beth. Thank you. Thank you. Prime Minister, just a couple of questions. Um, over the half of the 29 deaths today are in London. Uh, so, PM, I have to ask you on behalf of Londoners, do you not think it is now right to move to a more substantial lockdown of the capital like they have done in Italy and Spain and France, where you can't leave your house unless you're a key worker or you're going to the shops for food or medicine? Are you not doing that yet because you don't know how to enforce it or you can't enforce it, or rather you'll do it but the time isn't quite right. 
And just secondly, a bit of hope there. You're suggesting to the public that if they follow the rules, that you can turn the tide on this disease. Are you telling people that by the summer, they might, they just might, be able to go back to normal life, be able to go on their summer holidays? Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Beth. Well, look, a crucial thing there. I, I want to stress that um, we do want to see people following the advice that uh, we've given in the capital, which is, after, as you rightly say, the place where the, the disease seems to uh, be making the fastest progress, and it's vital that people uh, follow that advice. And, and, and you know, there's huge evidence that they are uh, in, in the takings in the, in the retail sector, the hospitality sector, TfL uh, in inner London down about uh, 80%, in, in outer London down about 60%. But some evidence that in some parts of the of the capital, it's it's very patchy, and some some areas where people aren't perhaps following it in quite the way uh, that we need them to do. So you know that is why to get back the answer that I gave to to Laura, we may have to consider going further. But I want to, want to stress that um, you know there is no prospect of us wanting to stop public transport in London, or stop TF, stop the tube, uh, or the or the buses. Uh, we're not going to be telling people. Uh, that under no circumstances, if they really need to go to work, uh, can they go to work? I hope people understand that. There's been some, uh, you know, I'm sure through no fault of the, of the media, but there's been a, a bit of misunderstanding uh, floating around about that. Uh, we're going to want people to avoid gatherings where they can transmit the, the disease. We're absolutely emphatic about that. And if it becomes necessary to do more to ensure that, uh, then we certainly, we certainly will do so. Uh, on, on, your, on your second question, which was really about the, the timing, um, I, 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 I am very confident we'll get this thing done. Uh, I'm very confident that we'll beat the coronavirus. I think we can turn the tide within the next 12 weeks, but it depends on collective, resolute action. And I think the encouraging thing is that the more disciplined we can all be in, in, in doing that, the, the, the greater the, the chances that the scientific uh, community will be able soon to uh, come up, as I say, with fantastic results on testing, to say nothing about other, other medical treatments. Robert Peston. Hello. Hi, uh, yeah, Robert Peston, nice to meet you. Um, if I could ask a couple of questions to Chris. Witty. Um, there's quite a lot of concern within the NHS about capacity running short in London hospitals. Could you tell us a bit about how you see the capacity issue in London? Uh, second is you'll also be aware there is a lot of concern among medical staff that they're not getting the protect protective equipment, which is apparently in the system, it's just not in the right places. How quickly will you be able to get it to the right places? And then finally, Prime Minister, you came up with a very interesting number just now. You said 250,000 tests. Well, what did you mean by that? Are they, are they on course soon? I'm going to pass that whole strict, strict number line to, to, to Patrick, who gave, who gave me the figure earlier on. But that's why that's why, that's why we want to get it. I mean, we, we want to... We, testing is, I think, crucial to our success in defeating uh, this, this virus. Uh, we're making fantastic progress on testing. I, we had a, a great meeting in uh, number 10 a couple of nights ago with people who are supplying tests of, of all kinds, not just the antibody tests that I, I mentioned, but much faster and more efficient tests to see whether you currently have the, the disease. And the potential of those to, to help us is obviously enormous. We're not there yet, but we will get there very soon. Patrick. You want to say about testing? Uh, yeah, Chris has obviously got one well there as well. But um, uh, the testing, so Public Health England are currently um, leading the testing on this. They're ramping up to 25,000. Um, there are proposals to get that much higher through other mechanisms for the virus itself. And then the antibody test, if that turns out to be something that can really be applied, that's one we want to ramp up as well. So ideally, you'd like to get to those sorts of numbers. You'd like to be able to do it for both testing the infection itself and testing the antibody. Going on practically, can that be done in a few short weeks? Uh, practically, that can be done. I mean, the, the testing for the virus is a pretty standard technology. It just happens to be obviously precise for this virus, but it's not a new technology you've got to invent. 
And if the uh, antibody test is reliable and works, and you know, the ifs in that, that sentence, but if it does, then that's a relatively easy thing to scale up. On uh, pressure in London, so at the moment, London uh, from the coronavirus is under pressure, but indirectly, but that's going to go up. And that is actually the reason for doing all of the things we're trying to do. Uh, and the first thing that will get under the greatest pressure will be in the intensive care and respiratory care system. That's the thing which, in a sense, that's the first point of, uh, of real pressure on the NHS that's going to happen. And to be clear, uh, even if everybody does all the things we hope and really, really would ask that they do do, the numbers will continue to go up over the next two weeks because it continues, it takes a while for there to be a lag. Uh, there's a lag until uh, things start to improve. Now at that stage, uh, we need to do three things. The first of which is obviously to try and pull the peak down, and that is the key thing that everybody can help with in terms of the social distancing. And let me be very straightforward. If the numbers are high enough, if a high enough proportion of people choose to and do go in for serious social distancing, and there's a lot of evidence that a huge proportion of people are, we don't know yet whether it's enough, that will pull the peak down. If they do not, then that is going to be a problem. This is, this is the national effort bit. The second thing we have to do, uh, and this is an NHS issue, is to increase the number of beds which are capable of taking respiratory patients, because that's the big uh, bottleneck for this particular infection. So that's, um, that's very important. And then the third thing we have to do is, at the moment, uh, all NHS staff who are getting, getting symptoms that are compatible with this virus are quite rightly self-isolating and isolating with their families if they have a household, and that is taking people out of the system. And the key thing we need to do is get the testing out First priority was ITU, second priority all the people who got symptoms, but the next priority for us is to get the NHS workers so we can test them quickly, and then if they got it, fine, they continue, but they know they've had it once. If they've not got it, uh, then they can come back to work, or if the, the reason they've stayed uh, at home uh, is because someone else in their family has got the symptoms, uh, we will test them and see if they've got it. Uh, on PPE, uh, the, uh, the, there is a kind of, there's a local and a global uh, issue on this. Uh, I completely uh, understand the points that my colleagues uh, in the NHS are, are concerned about on PPE. Uh, they write to me uh, regularly about this and entirely reasonably, and this is a major work, strand of work uh, for, uh, from, uh, for the Department of, of Health and Social Care, is to make sure that this works. Uh, obviously, in the short term, this is about making sure that the PPE stocks that there are go to the right places. Yeah. In the longer term, it's about making sure that the global system, because of course everybody wants this, and the supplies in some areas have gone down. There is a there will be a global issue we need to put together. And the final thing we need to get right on PPE is training, because if you use PPE incorrectly, it doesn't really have any advantages, and occasionally you can even make things worse. So it is important to get all three of those sorted out. Thanks, Chris. Um, Mesa. These are all Daily Express. Uh, thank you very much, Prime Minister. Um, firstly, on, on the antibody test that you mentioned, um, can you say a bit more about how that's going to be rolled out? Will, will people be tested uh, in their own homes? How will people be selected uh, whether they're going to have it? And secondly, there is some evidence that some shops and online retailers have been whacking up the prices of in-demand goods. Um, I mean, are you yeah. concerned that there is profiteering going on in this national crisis? Well, I'm going to ask uh, Chris and Patrick to talk about the, the test kit, the, the, though I, as I understand it, it, it it's like a, a, a pregnancy test. I think, I think blood is, is, is required rather than urine. Um, uh, but that's the, that's the basic idea, but I'll, I'll, I'll invite the experts and scientific experts to comment on the, on, on the test. And it may say, on, um, you know, mass buying and, and, the, and, the, and, and the, the price issue, I really hope that retailers will uh, continue to be reasonable. I, and I, I certainly don't want to see uh, profiteering of, of any kind. As, as I said before, uh, in these meetings, you know, we've got good supply chains, farm to fork. There's no reason for uh, the shops really to be uh, to, to be empty. And, and just, I, I, of course, like everybody understands why people are buying stuff. We're all being advised just to stay at home if we think we have symptoms and so on. But please be reasonable. Please be reasonable in your shopping. Be considerate and thoughtful of others uh, as you do it. 
on, on the antibody tests, um, uh, we should be clear that although we're confident there will be antibody tests, we're not absolutely confident yet about whether the ones that are currently on the market are the right ones, and that needs to be tested out, and that's something which is an absolute priority for Public Health England. But once we have these, uh, the key thing for, in the first case, healthcare workers, and then uh, other workers and members of society, is we'll be able to say to someone, if you've had this virus, uh, we're not likely to get again, at least in the immediate term, and now we can be confident you can return to work, and now we can be confident you don't need to take some of the precautions that you've been taking to date. Now, it'll take, there'll be a while before we've actually got this in large enough numbers, uh, and this is more useful for a variety of reasons, I probably this is not the right environment to go into, but more useful the further on in the epidemic it is. But this will be something which helps society to normalise little by little, even whilst we still have a significant number of cases. Uh, so this is going to make, a, as the Prime Minister says, a very big difference in the long run once we've got tests that we can rely on. Thanks very much. Lucy Fisher, Target. Thank you. Uh, two quick questions, if I may. Um, firstly, to uh, the experts, new data from the Centres for Disease Control and Prevention shows that nearly 40% of patients sick enough to be hospitalised in the US were aged 20 to 54. Is there any concern that the pandemic is affecting younger people in the UK worse than previously thought? Uh, and secondly, um, Prime Minister, the tide of redundancies are sweeping the country and your own MPs have said that the government is not doing enough to help struggling businesses retain workers. You've mentioned that the Chancellor is going to talk more about this tomorrow. But do you accept that every day you delay announcing new support measures will cause thousands of jobs to go? Well, just uh, on, on, let, me, let me say, uh, first of all, on that, it, it's very, very important. Everybody understands that uh, we will stick by businesses, and I hope that businesses will stick by uh, their employees. This country is going to, to bounce back. We're going to need some fantastic uh, companies remaining uh, to bounce back uh, as well. And then it's absolutely vital that everybody understands that. Now, uh, Rishi will be saying, uh, Charles will be saying more uh, tomorrow about the package we're putting in place for, uh, for, for workers uh, across the country to, to support everybody through this difficult time. We've been talking uh, to the trade unions and others today, and we think we'll have a great package ready to go. So I hope people will stick by their employees because we're all going to need them. On, on the second uh, question you asked, um, it's clear that there are three things that probably people need to think about simultaneously. Firstly, the great majority of people who get this virus, irrespective of age, will recover from it, and most of those will have a mild or moderate illness, not requiring any hospitalisation. Very important to make that point first off, because I think uh, that is a key point for people to remember. It particularly seems to be true uh, for children, where children seem, on the whole, to have this as a milder disease. Uh, than adults, and probably quite a lot milder in most cases. How, the second thing is, it is also true that particular groups of older people or vulnerable people, uh, medically vulnerable, uh, do get this more severely. And if you look in the data from China, if you look in the data from Italy, and if you look in the data initially from the UK, most of the deaths are occurring in those groups. But, and this is the point that the US is making, and I think it's an important point to emphasize, that is not to say that there will not be severe cases amongst people who are younger adults. Uh, and that is important because it's important that people don't trivialise this. This is a significant issue for everybody, although the great burden of disease will tend to fall in terms of severe disease in the more vulnerable groups. And that's why we've given very specific advice to people who are over 70 or have three existing health conditions that there will be people who don't fall into those groups who will fall seriously ill, unfortunately. The great majority will not, but some will. And so we do ask people, you know, take this seriously for yourself, as well as taking this seriously for all of society and as a way of taking pressure off the NHS. Thanks very much. Uh, Gordon, where's Gordon? Gordon Ray, Telegraph. Last question, I'm afraid, here on board. Thank you, Prime Minister. Um, just to, just to pick up on what uh, Beth asked earlier, you've, you've quoted this figure of 12 weeks to turn the tide, which is the first time you've said that. Um, you haven't really defined for us what turning the tide means, but I, I don't know whether perhaps Chris or Sir Patrick might be able to explain what that would look like. Does that mean that we will be well over this and we'll be 
returning to our normal lives, or does that mean that we will have just hit the peak and we'll be starting to go back down the other side? What does that actually mean? Well, um, what I want us to do is to get on top of it. And at the moment, uh, the disease is, 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 is proceeding in a, in a way that uh, does not seem yet to be responding to uh, our interventions. And I, I believe that a combination of uh, the measures that we're asking the public to take and better testing, scientific progress, will enable us to get on top of it within the next 12 weeks and, and turn the tide. Now, uh, I cannot stand here and tell you that we will, uh, have, by the end of June, uh, that we will be on the downward slope. Uh, it, it's possible, but I, can't, I simply can't say that that's uh, that for certain. Of course not. We don't know where we are, and we don't know how, how, how long this thing uh, will go on for. But what I can say is that uh, this is going to be finite. Uh, we will turn the tide, and I can see how to do it within the next 12 weeks. Well, I mean, I think, I think we, we're absolutely at the beginning of this, where, where the measures that are in place should start having an impact on the rate of growth of the epidemic, and they, those are significant measures, as we all know, and they're expected to then delay and break transmission train chains, so you would expect the um, uh, epidemic to come down. And the sooner we get that down, the more then we can move into phases as well where we can test and trace and make sure that we uh, keep on top of this. And there's a start of clinical trials, first patient enrolled today. There's the start of vaccine trials in mid-April expected. These are things which all together start to tell us that we've moved from a phase of it's growing and we need to take these measures to try and stop it growing to ones where we're saying put a lid on it and begin to start looking at what we do beyond that in order to get into the right position. And so I think that's where we need to get to and that's the time scale over which we need to really push to make sure that we get there. Thanks very much everybody. I, hope that I, I don't want to sound, um, uh, you know, I'm often accused of being um, unnecessarily boosterish about things. Uh, and I certainly don't want to strike that note to, today, but I, I, I genuinely think that uh, we, by the combination of these two things, we will turn the tide and we will get through it. But it is vital that we all do the first of, uh, of those, uh, take the first of those two steps together. We do need uh, a, a, a much, uh, a very, very energetic, concerted uh, effort to follow the medical advice and everybody uh, knows what it is, uh, we'll make a huge, huge difference if we all do it together. And then I think what will happen is that we will start to see uh, developments such as uh, we've seen in other countries where things have, the, the curve has started to come down. We will see the impact of our testing programs on new tests that we're talking about. I think we'll start to see those making a, making a profound difference. So that is why uh, my message to, to, to companies is is really think very carefully before you, you start laying off your staff. We do want to uh, stand behind uh, good companies. We do want to make sure that uh, people recognize that if, if they stand behind their staff, uh, they should stand behind their staff, because we in the government are going to stand behind uh, British firms. And as I say, and you've heard more about that this week from, uh, from the Chancellor, you're going to hear more tomorrow about what we're going to do to support, uh, to support employees.